reviews, celebrity gamers, prizes, and more. You've just entered the lab. The phantom is trying to disappear. More cool reviews. <laughs> Def Jam Icon, another interesting fighting game. Akon and Young Jesus. Here we have another Def Jam game, another game where rappers who smoke, drink and party all night then sleep all day seem to still be able to keep in great shape and execute martial arts techniques on the level of Jackie Chan and Jet Li. Hmm, I'll get straight to the gameplay. In Def Jam Icons, the controls have changed a bit since Fight for New York. In some ways it's for the better and in others it's for the worse. The bad first, you're not able to run anymore and in this game you're able to throw your opponents way across the stages. So with the fact that you can do these amazing throws you'd like to be able to follow by running to your downed opponent and continue the beatdown before he gets up but no, you can only stroll across to him or roll or flip which still doesn't cover much ground. Another thing you can't do anymore is pick up a guy after you've knocked him down. You can kick him while he's down, but that's it. Picking up your opponent and continuing the fight was a well-placed element in Fight for New York. This and the running technique should not have been omitted. Also, one more thing that might bother some people are the controls. The controls can seem very awkward at first. As a matter of fact, they might seem awkward the entire time you're playing if you're not the kind of person to adapt and get over the fact that you're not playing Soul Calibur anymore. What happens here is, because of the button layout, even though the game moves at a slow pace where the fighting is concerned, if you're not an experienced gamer, you might find these controls very frustrating. To execute certain techniques, you'll have to do combos that involve using the right analog stick and the left D-pad. And then you have these special turntable styled moves where you do a turntable mix styled motion both on screen and on the control pad to manipulate your environment and deal more damage. So the controls definitely aren't like your regular fighters but they still work and like I said the fights are done at a real slow pace so this gives you a chance to catch on. The good news about the gameplay is, one, even though it's hard to believe these rappers find time to practice and master the martial arts, the moves do look believable. The fighting has the same gritty street look to it, although I wouldn't expect to see Sean Paul in a street fight doing techniques like these. <laughs> The actual fighting still looks realistic. I don't see anybody jumping 20 feet in the air and shooting projectiles from their fists or palms. Another thing that brings you even closer to that real feeling is the absence of life bars or power meters. The screen is clean. No clocks, no special moves meters, no life bars. You just keep fighting till the screen starts to look burnt out. And eventually you or your opponent looks run down, then shortly after that someone hits the pavement and never gets back up. Hey, yo, not, not A nice touch. What's not realistic about the fights are the crazy destructible environments. Now in one stage you can throw your opponent through a shop window, then the owner will use something like a fire extinguisher to repel whoever comes near. This is cool, but then in other parts it's like the movie Poltergeist with the killer tree. You have cars and helicopters swinging about, knocking you over and vault doors and camera cranes, all with lives and minds of their own, adding to the chaos. 
this is fine when it works in your favor, but when on the losing end of a bout, this will upset you. On the subject of the environment, let me talk about the visuals. The graphics in Icon are really nice, especially during the fights. The textures and colors of each stage are really nice. I particularly love the gas station and the neighborhood scenes. Real sweet. And the character designs are also well done. A lot of detail, from fighting techniques to body language to facial expressions. Great. The audio is also well done. The soundtracks are what I've come to expect from the series. Lots and lots of hip hop and some dance hall as well. The voice acting is on point. The developers use the actual rappers to do their own voices and they do sound convincing. Sometimes during the game you'll notice that different characters use the same lines though. Like the off-duty police officer, in a fight you'll hear him say things in his white American accent that you already heard someone else saying. Same words, different voice. But other than that, I'm good with the voice acting. Sean Paul sounds like Sean Paul. The story of the game is played out in a stage called Build a Label. Now the story isn't that great, but it is interesting. You begin this story by creating your character from scratch, basically. I found it harder to get the facial features the way I wanted them than in Fight for New York, but I worked with it. At the start of the story, you see where a guy gives a kid an autograph and then gets shot. Let me get that hundred dollars. Then the story goes back a couple years and things start up. You work your way from a small timer with nothing to lose to a hip hop moogle. You start off in a shabby old apartment with a computer reminiscent of a Commodore 64. Then after signing a few artists and making some real money, you move up to the big times. You can go shop for clothes, shoes, jewelry, and so on. You even get a girlfriend in the process. And just like the artists you manage, you must keep her happy in order to maintain a healthy relationship. Both your girlfriend and your artist can be very demanding at times, asking you for crazy favors. It's up to you to keep them happy and the record selling, while dealing with corrupt cops and bootleggers. The story sounds okay, but really the meat of the game is butt whooping. Sean Paul will send you an email that some crazy fan is stalking him and he needs you to go deal with him or T.I. will ask you to deal with some cop who's hassling him. Either way, it all ends in punches and kicks being traded, then respect will be earned based on the outcome of these fights. That's what I'm talking about. Again, I'm happy that our very own dance hall music is being highlighted in a popular video game. There's no elephant man this time, which is a pity, but Sean is out in full force, recording hit songs and fighting like a capoeira master. <laughs> Def Jam Icon also offers decent replay value. Other than the build a label mode, you can go at it in versus mode. Choosing from the roster of hip hop stars plus the characters you unlock in build a label mode and your custom characters. So after you beat the story mode, you'll still have a reason to pick it up again. Once you get over the controls, you should have one solid fighting game on your hands. And other than the obvious up points, it's always enjoyable to play a game which features our own Jamaican talent. I expected to see more Jamaican acts this time around, not less. But either way, it's still a step in the right direction. Besides, not only did EA cut back on the Jamaican entertainers, a lot of hip-hop artists from Fight for New York were omitted as well. Def Jam Icon is still a good game and a must-have for any fan of the fighting genre and hip-hop or dancehall music. The Lab gives Def Jam Icon an 8 out of 10. Come on in the place.